currently driving a Holden Malibu. This is a 2.4 engine. It's the LE9 motor that's in it. And it has an engine management light on and it has a bad idle. It's not running right to so poor performance. And um, the throttle is not settling on it. So there is a couple of fault codes that's stored. I'm just currently doing a road test on the vehicle now while I'm looking at the live data to get some indication as to what might be going on. So the fault codes that are stored are P0121, I think it's throttle position or accelerator problem, I think that's what that code is. And then the next fault code that's also stored is P0506, idle control system, the RPM too low, and then that's in the engine section, both of those. So what I'm going to plan to do is just get an indication that we're getting actual responses. So with the parameters set up on the scan tool, I'm able to just take a glance, make sure that the sensors are reactive that the desired meets the actual uh, and desired actual in the actual throttle, throttle opening um, and I will make decisions based from there. So after I get back to the workshop, the next thing I want to do is have a visible look at that throttle body. I want to check the condition of that butterfly flap and the throttle body and see what it looks like. I disconnect the air intake pipe here. It's just held on by two clamps. Flat screwdriver removes it and straight away I can see an issue. In on the intake side, we have a problem. There is a sludge buildup coming through there which I know I'm in the right area for a problem. I take the top cover off here and what you have sitting on the top of this throttle body is like a breather system. You have a pipe that connects directly to the rocker cover and that can allow oil to come back through and come into the throttle body and cause issues over time. I'm not sure of the service history of this vehicle at all. It was the first time it had come to us but I can see that there is an issue that's been present for quite a while. Upon closer inspection of this throttle body, you can see that this has been building up for a long period of time. Now, while I assess this, I was going to do a cleaning on the vehicle. You can see the droplets that came out of the plastic top piece. Um, what I'm doing here is just having a, a look to see if I need to do much cleaning in there. I do off camera later uh, clean that up as well. This other pipe here is what connects to the breather pipe and goes onto the top of that valve cover. Now, what I was saying about the uh, cleaning, I was going to do the cleaning of this in situ. And this is a tip you can use if you decide to do yours that way. Um, I'm just using a bonnet stay. I press the... Um, driver's seat move it forward and with the accelerator throttle held down with the ignition on you'd have the butterfly flap opened i did take it out again because upon closer inspection i did change my mind i decided i want to get this throttle body out leave it steeped in cleaner for a while and give it the best chance of cleaning that i possibly could i didn't want to be pouring a lot of cleaner into the intake system i know you can do it with rags but this is one of the more extreme dirty ones that i've seen so uh, it's four 10 millimeter um, screws that's holding this down onto the intake manifold and it just pops straight up out of position um, the plastic piece that sits on the top of the throttle body that was just one other clamp and a flat screwdriver again removed that out of the way now I'm not showing the cleaning process because it is very straightforward the only thing you need to worry about is one going gentle you don't want to do any damage um, where you're scraping or you're marking and two you do not want to move that flap whatsoever you can do damage to electronic throttle bodies if you 
forcibly move them. So once you follow them steps, you're ready to put it back in the vehicle and see if you have a difference. So it's idling much better and uh, no engine light has come back on at the moment. I'm just gonna do an idle relearn now. So everything's now back together. I am on the final, hopefully, road test of this one. Um, there is a noticeable difference straight away. It feels smoother, engine light is off, but what I need to do now is bring it for an extensive road test. We wanna go through enough drive cycles to see if any fault comes back or this is good to go home. So I'm gonna bring this for a long extended drive, see how it performs. Um, so far so good, we have smooth gear changes, no erratic idle, no bouncing like it was and uh, the, um, the gear shifting is definitely, definitely better with uh, better acceleration as well. So I will check back in with you when I'm on the way back and let you know whether this has been successful or not. The idle has steadied a lot. It's not bouncing up and down like it was. Um, a lot of improvement here, so this is looking promising. Hopefully after this last bit of the road test, we will have no light on and this will be able to go home. As you can see there, it's staying nice and steady. There's very little deviation between the up and down on the idle like it was. So we definitely have got a considerable improvement on this. So I'm just on the home straight now, heading back to the workshop, and this has driven perfectly. We've had no issues whatsoever. I've pulled in a couple of times. I've checked the live data. I've checked to see if any fault codes have returned. We have done a few different driving conditions. So we've gone on the open road. We've also done some short journeys as well in around town, and it is all good. No erratic idle, no loss in performance, and no faults returning. So I'll be happy in this current condition to give this back to the customer. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.